Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts. Listen, you guys, I prayed to the Lord tonight and asked him what he would like to talk about, and I got sound doctrine. Okay, I got an, um, I'm going to read two verses to you, and then we are going to talk about what would you prefer. Now, this is uh, going to come at you like a buffet style. And let's see what makes more sense to you. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Titus chapter 2, verse 1. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Number 2. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Now, Father, we ask you to anoint this so that we get the right fruits and the right juices out of this message in the name of Jesus. Anoint. Thank you, Lord. Listen, question. What would you do if you were a, uh, let's say, eight or nine years old, maybe 10, and I said, I'd like you to pick and choose the family you'd like to live with. Now, this would be for a whole month. You get to stay there and live according to that family's ways. And I tell you, now, whatever they do, you've got to, Go along with it. And if you opt out, then you're out of the game and you're disqualified. But you have that right just in case it doesn't quite meet with your standards. Now, here's a question. What would you do? What would your reaction be if I sent you to a home where both the mother and father, now these are your fake mothers and fathers, remember that. It's your fake family now. And the mother, the one playing the mother, the one playing the father, they stay up all night long. They play loud music. They're smoking. They're drinking. They get drunk. They have loud arguments. Um, but when you ask, can you go out and play, they tell you, go do what you want to do. So you go out and play. And you come back. Is it, dinner, is it supper time yet? And they tell you, I don't know what, this ain't no kitchen. You want to fix something to eat, you better fix it yourself. So now you got to fix your own. You might just pour yourself a, a bowl of Cheerios if, if you don't know how to cook too many things. And you know, Some parents teach their kids to cook young. But anyway, so now you've got to fend for yourself for dinner. But what happens if? When you come home from school, this is another day now, school day. You come home from school, and you know you have homework. And it always makes you mad when your mother makes you do your homework and your father checks it if they're both in the home. Okay. And here you are with this fake family. And you pull out your book. And they tell you, uh, if you're going to do that, you better do it in your bedroom because I don't want you cluttering up my house. So you go in the bedroom and you have a hard time and you come out and ask them a question. And one of them says, why don't you go on outside and play? I don't know that crap. Okay. And then you say, well, what time do I have to be in? Because you're used to a curfew. And they tell you, I don't care whenever you want to come in. We probably won't know it anyway. And you're out there playing till 9, 9.30, and you realize all your all the kids on the block that you've met are in the house, and you're out there by yourself. But you ain't that crazy about that couple because they either argue or they drunk. So you hang on the stoop for another 30 minutes, and then you're dozing off, and you finally get inside and go on to bed. But here's the sad part. You haven't had any dinner. Now you got to get up in the morning. And nobody's waking you up to go to school. You lucked out the first day. But you realize nobody's getting you up for school. 
and you wake up and it's nine or ten o'clock and not in the morning. And you realize you miss school. Oh, no. You had tests and assignments. and Oh, man. So now you're hungry. So you go in the kitchen. What are we having for breakfast? Huh. You better go in there and see what there is. And don't eat my eggs. Now, now, now you chose to hang with this family now. How long is that going to last? Are you going to really like having all that free time and nobody telling you what to or not to do unless it's inconvenient for them? After a while, you start realizing these people really don't care about me. And you start to understand that restraints, mm-hmm, that rules and regulations, <laughs> all the things that made you angry about your mother and father, you're starting to understand what value they served. You have no boundaries. You can do whatever you want to do, whenever you want to do it. But you're hungry. You have no support when it comes to your schoolwork. Nobody's waking you up to send you to school. Nobody's doing your laundry. And you can stay out as late as you want. You can have it your way. Now, what do you do? Do you stay in the game? Because you get your, your grades are starting to slip. Teachers are asking you what's up. What are you going to do? Stay in the game? Or are you going to opt out and go on back home where there's some sense going on in that house? That's sound doctrine. Sound doctrine is you go do your homework. You take care of business. You be responsible. You do the right thing when you have a choice to do something wrong. Choose to do right. Sound doctrine puts restraints on us. Sound doctrine gives us borders and, and, and boundaries and do's and don'ts and all kind of stuff. And you know, a lot of us don't like being told what to do, do we? But when you look at the other side, you realize being raised with restraints, living a life of restraints, do's and don'ts that are there for our own good are for the good and they do serve a purpose. You would feel like a lost puppy in the, in the park somewhere if nobody gave you restraints. You would grow up so wild and woolly and that's why some people end up inmates. Some people end up doing so much time. They're in and out of jail or in and out of a prison because they grew up with no restraints, nothing but chaos in the home. And while you were angry because you were made to come inside and they could sit out all night long, oh, they weren't happy about it, but what else they going to do? They're going to front. So you think they got it in the bag and you're the one. You're the one they wish they could be. You're the one with the love in the home. You're the one with parents who help you with your homework. And as an adult, instead of hanging out and doing what you're big and bad enough to do, when you realize that your upbringing has served a purpose and those restraints and boundaries have served a purpose, you understand that God is not trying to cramp your style either. He's trying to be a blessing to your life. And if you follow sound doctrine, if you follow stuff that makes sense, you know what's right and wrong. You feel it in your gut. You don't always need somebody telling you what's right and wrong when you've been raised with standards. Oh, you know what's right and wrong. You know it's wrong to go in your mama's purse and steal her money. You know it's wrong to grab the keys and, and, uh, and drive your father's car around without his permission. 
You know it's wrong to have a bunch of kids up in your house partying and breaking things and getting high and doing all kind of stuff up in there when your parents are on vacation. You know. And as adults, you know it's not right to cheat on your wife. You know it's not right to play around on your husband. You know it. Because if it was right, you wouldn't be slipping and sliding, peeping and hiding. So, sound doctrine, too many restraints and living a holy life, you got to do what you got to do. Well, get on out there and do what you got to do and live that dysfunctional life and pay those dues. Get up in there and, 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 and be the slave, the modern day slave, doing all that work and you ain't getting diddly squat for it. But you getting raped and you getting beaten and you getting molested by the guards and you getting treated like crap. And you living like a, 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 a trained robot with no rights, no freedom, no nothing, just institutionalized. Because you don't want boundaries. You don't want sound doctrine in your life. Because... A man got to do what a man got to do. And you know a woman got to do. So y'all go on and do your thing. Remember that old thing? It's y'all thing. Do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Well, check it out, baby. Look at the price tag you have had all your life doing what you want to do. Ain't it about time? How old are you now? 15, 20, 30, 40, 45, 50. Ain't it about time for some sound doctrine in your life? I think it's a little past time, don't you? Well, if you turn to God, he will do you right, baby. But if you want to keep going down the road you're going... All I can say is, Lord have mercy on you. Because it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. Turn around while you can. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Rules, regulations, and all. Seek him. In Jeremiah 29, 11, I believe, if I'm correct, it says, this is where God's talking to all his knuckleheads, even the wayward ones. For I know the plans I have for you, plans to bless you, not harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. That's paraphrased, but you get the point. God is not about trying to jack you up, jerk you around, rip you off, do you dirt sodomize your life, your rights, your personality, your dignity. No, God ain't using you, playing you, and, and manipulating you, and screwing you around. That's not God. But the one you serving is doing that. That you want to keep hanging with him, just keep on hanging with him. I feel sorry for you because it's going to get worse and worse. He'll reel you in all sweet and nice and sell you a few goods. And when you get all locked in and tied up, and hey, you'll find out there's a stinger at the end of that tail. Not a hug, not a kiss, not moral support. <laughs> Seek God while he may be found and get in with his sound doctrine. Get in that Bible and understand why he says what he says. Let me tell you something. I was reading the Bible when I first got saved. I think I had been saved for about maybe three weeks. And I'm reading. Now, here's the trip. When I first read the Bible, when I was unsaved, it was like reading gibberish. But when I got saved and I prayed and asked God to give me understanding, 
all of a sudden it was like reading my own language. I could understand it. I could even understand a lot of the insinuations and the Holy Spirit was giving me revelations. Well, one of the things I noticed, the Bible will teach you like a parent about human nature. And one of the first things I saw about human nature was passing the buck was originated at the fall of human, of mankind. When Adam and Eve fell into sin, <laughs> I'll say stepped into it, they didn't fall, they stepped into that mess. The first thing Eve did when God said, what have you done? Instead of her confessing and saying, you know, I was wrong, oh, please forgive me, da, da, da. No, she says, well, the, the, the serpent, that serpent is his fault. He beguiled me. She didn't take any responsibility. When he went to Adam, Adam said, well, the woman you gave me, she made me do it. So she hollers, the devil made me do it. He hollers, the woman made me do it. And nobody took responsibility for their own sin. And that was the beginning of what we call passing the buck, baby. <laughs> you will learn so much more about human, human life, human nature, mankind. One of the other things I learned was the way they treated Jesus. This was this was such a trip because I've seen it down through the years. People will love you one minute and they will hate you the next. And you'll be sitting up there scratching your head saying, what the heck is up with that? It's called people. It's just in the DNA. That's what we do. Jesus Christ was riding in town on a mule. Remember that story? And everybody had their palms. That's why they call it Palm Sunday. Everybody had their palms. They're laying it on the ground, hollering, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And they're laying down their palms and they're worshiping Jesus as he's coming in on this donkey. Okay. And all of a sudden, within a week's time, the same Jesus they were bowing to and giving all this honor to and reverence. And oh, all of a sudden, when they have a choice between a thief and, okay, Barabbas and Jesus. Barabbas was guilty of sin, baby. They chose to release Barabbas and crucify the sinless one, Jesus. Now, a week before, those same people, Hosanna in the highest. Oh. And a week later, crucify his butt. And that's what we do, don't we? Some of you have had it done to you. And you know how lousy that feels. Thank God you didn't have to hang on a cross for it. Read the Bible, you guys. It will teach you an awful lot about life. You will learn how to spot trouble ahead of time. The Bible will parent you. If your parents didn't do that great of a job, the Bible will. And God will be your father if you're willing to be his son and or, or your son or daughter. You hear me? Okay. I'm going to stop. I'm going to leave it with you. It's your decision. Choose you this day whom you will serve. God bless you. As for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. When my husband was alive, we both served the Lord. And that made the difference in our marriage. Our marriage was heavenly. When we look at all of our faults, we could have had a horrendous marriage. We had a storybook, a fairy tale marriage, a fairy tale love. We really and truly had a blissful relationship. 
and we were tight, intimate, deep, and we really, really clicked. We understood each other in so many ways. Well, anyway, that's enough about my husband, but that those are the kind of blessings that come with living with a God, serving a God who teaches us sound doctrine and going to a church that teaches sound doctrine and reading the Bible that offers sound doctrine.